the only reason why we're here on this earth is to build relationships. It's not about the things or, or the places or, or other things that we can think that we can take with us because we can't. It's the relationships that we build and, and the impressions that we leave and the legacy that we leave behind. So Focus on the Five is really about that. It's about leaving your legacy and being true to who you are. See, I do believe, though, that the Five Percenter has a role to play. All people have a role to play. The Five Percenters is unique. It's unique because their role is to be the leader that they were born to be, to go out and inspire others, to go out and encourage others to become something greater than themselves. Not everybody's born that way. Not everybody's naturally that way. And some people just don't want to get it. They don't, even, they don't really care. They like being conservative. They like having that soft place to land. And I'm not here to knock it. I think that it makes sense. It really does. I think God in his wisdom created the world with balance. Thank God there's not 95 percenters, 90 percent of the, of the world being five percenters because it would be a very imbalanced world. But I think that there was the five percenter to actually go out and to, to take that risk. So we're asking you to be that five percenter that you were born to be and maybe join and become a part of the movement. Become a part of something bigger than yourself. Leave something as a legacy to the next generation. Somewhere out there right now, there's a little boy or a little girl that's born whose parents or their siblings do not understand the five percenter that they were born to be. And if you could actually leave a legacy, an understanding, or you could help create a platform, a place that that five percenter could find, a soft place to land, and then grow to become the leader that they're supposed to be. Can you think of something that you could re dedicate your life to that would be greater than that? I know for me, I can't. This is what I have to do the rest of my life. And I have a large following of people who believe the same thing that's happening in our, in our movement called Focus on the Five. If you haven't read the book yet, you should read the book Focus on the Five. I wrote that book, but I wrote it based off of a life of experiences. 37 years of selling over 6,000 homes to people, I experienced all kinds of personalities and, and I experienced all kinds of ways they made choices. And I found there definitely was patterns. Over the years, I realized that some people make choices based on five percenters, and some make choices based on the 50 percenter mentality. Most make it on the 50 percenter mentality. And when you meet that five percenter, they're easy to spot because they can make a decision that day. And generally, they do. I mean, it's just the nature of the five percenter. They don't really need to take a long look at something. They get it quickly. You could call it they operate off of faith. You could call it they gut instinct. Call it whatever you want to call it. But I believe it's both of those. I think it's, it's a gut instinct that comes off of something they just feel in their gut, and it's something that also happens because of their faith. But the bottom line is they can make a choice, and they can make a decision. Do they always make the right one? No. Do they make mistakes? Absolutely. But you know what they do? They land on all four feet, and they come right back. They, they fall down, but they brush themselves off, and they get right back up again. Give an example, pro football player. Pro football players don't become pro football players as a 50 percenter you can be certain of that. They have many a times a tackle gets knocked down, gets back up, gets knocked down, gets back up, gets knocked down and gets back up all on the same play and makes the tackle of the quarterback. Now that's why he's in the Super Bowl because it's how he thinks, it's, how he's, it's his destiny. Sure he knows it hurts the first time he gets knocked down. Sure he knows that, that it's probably smarter to stay on the ground. It's not about being smart, it's about being who he's meant to be. See, if God gives you tools to use, you're supposed to use them. Don't make fun of people that uses their tools for what they're supposed to use them for. Please give that 5% the opportunity to be the 5% they're supposed to be. And if you'll respect them, then they'll respect you in return. We as 5%ers are really glad that the rest of the world is not a 5%er because we like the fact that we're unique. We like the fact that that's what motivates us is to do the things that other people aren't willing to do. And if you're married to a 5 percenter, I strongly, re I strongly recommend you read the book, Focus on the Five. It'll make you understand the 5 percenter a little better, understand why they are the way they are, why they make the decisions that they do. It's very important to understand that small child that has to go left when the rest of the crowd goes right. It's not that they're trying to be rebellious. It's not even that they're trying to uh, be mean or, or ignore your, your rules. It's just that they're being who they're supposed to be. You know. If you're a tall child and you're raised in a small world and you have to duck your head every time you walk through a door, well, you know, it kind of gets annoying. And so eventually you just knock the door out, the facing, and say, hey, it needs to be taller for me. 
And the rest of the world says, well, what are you doing? Why are you knocking a hole through the wall? And he says, yeah, because I'm taller. See, it's not as easy to identify for a five percenter, but the reality is it's just like that. There's really not a lot of difference. What's the value in organizing five percenters? Well, there's a fantastic value in it. It's called networking. When five percenters can feed off of each other and realize that there's a lot more of us out there in the world, we can relate to each other. You know, there's a saying that you want to be around like-minded people. Well, five percenters need that. They need that pat on the back, that encouragement, that, hey, you're right, go for it. In fact, they even like it when people join in and become a part of their movement. So that's, again, what Focus on the Five is about. It's about creating a platform for the entrepreneur to be able to come to a group of five percenters and say, hey, I've got a new idea, but I really don't know how to implement it yet. And the five percenters say, well, hey, let's help you implement it. And the five percenters can become a benefit to that. They can become a part of that, that new idea, or they may just want to give back to that person just to help them become the five percenter they're meant to be. See, I think it's really important that five percenters have that platform because when they go to work for corporations, corporations have a tendency to want to squash their dreams and their creativity. Corporations were designed for the 50 percenter. They were designed for the 30 percenter. I mean, the reality is, is that the, the masses have to get along with each other and they have to work in a working environment to where they understand each other. But it doesn't really create a very good working environment for the 5 percenter. And since they're such a small group of people, they just don't fit in. I mean, let's face it. The average founder doesn't need another founder to run his company. So the five percenters, there's so few of them, but they're kind of frustrated because they work for these companies and realize they don't really fit in. They don't really want to work for somebody else. And so it can be very frustrating to a spouse or significant others because the reality is, is they're thinking, but I need you to be steadfast and settle down. And, but that's just not who they are. You know, a stallion needs to run free and a five percenter is no different. We do understand the structure of the world. We understand because believe me, it's bred into us from the time that we're, we're very young.